It'll take a second to show up there. And then I will got like a minute before the before we'll start the webinar and let people start filing in. There it is. We are live on the YouTube. And we'll go ahead and get started here. So that will allow people to file in. Uh, so good morning while uh, while the doors are opening. Uh, we are seeing some folks joining us here. Uh, so while we're uh, while we're waiting, uh, happy new year. <laughs> um, wanted to kind of wish everybody a, a, a great 2021. Michelle, uh, I'm sure of anyone, uh, you are glad uh, 2020 is over. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I couldn't go out quietly. I, uh, For those of you that did not follow me on Facebook, on the 29th, I wound up having an emergency appendectomy when I was out in the Rocky Mountains. So had a little surgery to end the year. And I can't tell you this. I would rather have that appendectomy surgery than the two weeks of COVID I had back in October because the surgery was easier than COVID. So stay safe, and you, everybody. <laughs> and, and you were saying you were actually in the labor and delivery section, which is kind of a little out of place. Uh, for... <laughs> I know I had to be their oldest patient in there, but after surgery, they wanted to keep me away from sick people or COVID patients or whatever, and they didn't have room in some other places. So for recovery, I went to the maternity ward, <laughs> the birthing center, <laughs> which I thought was quite comical. But I did get special attention over there. Well, nice, well, nice. Well, anyway. uh, welcome, welcome to uh, our first uh, QB Power Hour of 2021. And uh, we typically like to have a, a our first one in the new year to be something about well, looking forward. You know, because you 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 look at um, you know the the windshield is so much bigger than the rear view mirror. Um, and, uh, you know, unfortunately, as, as uh, or fortunately un or unfortunately, as, as accounting professionals, we tend to look back a lot. Uh, what did we do last year? What did we what reports we got to prepare for taxes? Uh, so we do spend a lot of time looking in that rearview mirror, but especially, you know, new year, new whatever. <laughs> um, we want to we want we want our first uh, QB power hour to be that windshield and, and looking forward and um and we have a great, uh, great episode today where we're going to be talking about growth in 2021. Uh, we have a, uh, a, a group of folks that, that are joining us that have created a cloud accounting playbook. Uh, so we're going to actually talk about that uh, today. Uh, so Michelle, needs Hi. no introduction, but <laughs> go ahead and introduce yourself. Michelle Long, owner of Long for Success. Very glad to have you all with us today and uh, continuing on with another great year, starting with some great content with all these guys. So I would invite you guys to join us if you haven't already in the Facebook group. We're over 10,000 members out there now, um, and it's a very active group. So enough about me. Dan, how about you? Yeah, Dan DeLong, owner of Danwith, um, where we transform businesses through technology, formerly of Intuit. I've uh, done some technical editing for the QBO for Dummies series and uh, new chief uh, partner content creator at uh, schoolofbookkeeping.com. Uh, so a little bit about the QB Power Hour webinar series. It's every other Tuesday at uh, 12 noon Eastern. Um, you see our, our upcoming schedule. This is a rarity for us uh, <laughs> that we actually have <laughs> booked out uh, more than just the next day. Uh, so you can see the, the upcoming schedules of, of things that are things that are happening um, and uh, links there for the PDF of the slides. We've created uh, a 2021 folder uh, so you can you can access all of the, the prior uh, handouts uh, as well as all of the, the upcoming ones for, for 2021. Uh, They're listed there. Um, of course, you can watch the, uh, the prior recordings on, on Michelle's YouTube channel and listen to the podcast. Uh, so, Michelle, uh, you had a, an update or, or a, an announcement on, uh, on tax season. Yes, yes. I just wanted to let uh, our, our attendees know, those of, the, of you that might have missed it, because they did one in December and they're doing another one this week. Um, so Wednesday and Thursday, they're doing the tax season readiness VCON. <clears throat> excuse me, it is free to register and you can get free CPE. They're going to be talking about things like what's new and top questions, talking about Lacert, 
ProConnect, Tax Online, Pro Series. Uh, I did a session on QuickBooks a year in for QBO. Laura did one on desktop. Plus, there's a really great session. I know we're going to mention some of this today um, on cybersecurity and stuff. So a lot of great content there, and that's free. As you know, of course, we always have the events at QBTrainingEvents.com. But I wanted to make people aware of this tax season readiness VCon. So hope to see you at that as well. Awesome. And um, so we have an, an announcement. Um, so new for 2021, uh, you can stay connected with the QB Power Hour on your phone. Uh, so you can text QBPH uh, to this number, which is uh, 833, it's toll free, 833 uh, 395 QBPH uh, for, for those of you. Um, uh, phone challenge that's 7274. <laughs> Um, and you can access prior recordings, see the upcoming schedule, or suggest a, an, an upcoming topic for this for the series. And then once you're once you're enrolled or opted in there, uh, we'll we'll let you know when the when the uh, when the power hour is about to start. Uh, so you can just join in from your phone if you forgot to um, opt uh, or if you forgot to uh, uh, get set up at your at your computer. Uh, so you can text us now. Uh, so our agenda today, um, we're going to talk about the, the the genesis or you know where this playbook uh, came from, and then we, our great panel that has joined us here today uh, from Re Relay, Practice, Ignition, and Carbon. Uh, we're going to take some of the sections of that playbook, and then at the end, you'll be able to access uh, the entire playbook because we we can't cram it all into one hour, unfortunately. So. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, launch our first uh, poll question, which is what version of QuickBooks are you using or or not? Um, you know, if you're using other versions of, of accounting software, and I'm going to stop sharing so I can pass it over uh, to Yusuf. So uh, let's talk about this uh, this 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 playbook. Uh, Ian from from Carbon and Ryan from Practice Ignition and, and Yusuf West from from Relay Financial. Where did this all come from? This is some a project you guys have been working on for, for a couple months. Who wants to? <laughs> Who wants yeah, to sorry, I was scrambling to find the <laughs> unmute button. I, I was like in the midst of, you know, sharing and I apologize, not a great start to 2021. That was it. It's in the that same spot was in 2020. Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, <laughs> the technological challenges are still there. Um, yeah, it's something we kind of came together on. We were kind of looking back on this year, and I think, you know, 2020 has been such a reflective year for all of us. We've kind of been forced to distill our lives down to like kind of what's there and, and look at the good and the bad. And we thought, you know, how do we apply this to cloud accounting? Because why wouldn't we think that? Um, and so we talked to a lot of like really smart folks in the space um, just to kind of learn, you know, what their challenges were, what their learnings were, and kind of how they're going forward into this coming year. And I think we're all hoping this year is going to be better than the last. Um, uh, so we wanted to distill and kind of share those learnings. Awesome. And um, and and uh, how did this? Um, how did like? Did you send up a bat signal? Uh, how did you get people to <laughs> uh, to, to participate? I, I think Ian, it was a bat signal. Am I? That is correct. <laughs> that is a, a stunningly good guess, actually. Uh, you know, Dan. Honestly, you know, both the Prax Ignition team, the Relay team, myself, we've we've collaborated collaborated in the past. We're fortunate, very fortunate, to be able to work with some great practitioners, um, some great accounting professionals, and accountants across the globe. And we thought that, you know, we, we have done things in the past and we've been able to put some really, really good actionable um, content and get some really great insights. And so it just felt fitting coming into the end of what's been a really difficult year and challenging year in many ways. And to be able to share what we have the ability to get, you know, be able to pull from others to have share and, and contribute and make it to 2021 is going to be better for everybody else. So that's that's really where this culminated from. Fantastic. So, all right. So sharing the results of our first poll question, uh, looks like most most folks are using both uh, QuickBooks Online and Desktop, uh, but uh, Online is a very close second. So I'll hand it over to uh, Yusuf. Uh, let you get started on on telling us about the just giving us an overview of the of the playbook itself. 
Perfect. Uh, so I, I think that was actually such a great uh, introduction to kind of what, what we're going to present today. And this is really a summary of, I think it's like a 35 page playbook uh, PDF. So uh, someone's going to share a link in the chat. Uh, so you can go ahead and just download it. So you have it for your reference. Um, but really look at this as kind of like a distillation, a summary of kind of what you get uh, in that PDF. The PDF is really helpful just as like reference point kind of going forward. Um, I think we all like as, as business owners, because that's that's what all of you really are, or you're working in a business and hopefully you feel that, that level of ownership. We're really looking for kind of a playbook for how we do things bigger and better uh, in the, the coming days, weeks, months, years. Um, and that's really why we came together with... Uh, you know, practice ignition and carbon uh, to put together this playbook and all of these wonderful people, all these smiley faces. I think everyone is smiling, or at least you got some smizes uh, at the at the very least. Um, you know, contributed to, and uh, we really like. You know, at the end of the day, the three of us are are vendors, and we have a, a good understanding. But it's really the folks that are in the trenches uh, that that really know this stuff uh, super deeply. Um, maybe minus Ian because uh, he's just a genius. Um, and uh, so that's that's kind of where where we started. Um, so our our goals for this is really to answer the questions like what are the forward thinking firms taking from 2020 and applying into 2021? Um, and what can we actually help parse out uh, from those lessons uh, and kind of forward looking statements uh, so that you can all take make the most of it uh, in the year ahead? Um, so uh, before we get into the, the meat uh, and potatoes of this, let's just do some quick intros. Uh, I'm Youssef uh, from Relay. Apologies, I bought one of those like fitness tracker rings. Apparently I'm terrible at sleeping. It's all, there's a lot of learning uh, going on. Um, anyway, so uh, I, I'm one of the co-founders of Relay, which is business banking that makes bookkeeping easy. So you get like a partner portal, uh, user permissions for your staff and team. You get uh, direct bank feed into the accounting system, so it's super reliable. Um, and you get enriched transaction data, like getting to see check deposits uh, as they come through for your clients. Um, uh, if you want to check us out, relayfi.com slash partners. Um, it's, it's, I mean, it's obviously awesome. Um, I will uh, pass it on. Uh, to Ian. I'm the uh, co-founder and chief customer officer, um, bottle washer, janitorial services um, over at Carbon. Um, we are ultimately work management software for accounting firms. Um, we're now in our sixth year, um, crazily enough. You have a screenshot there, but if you want to bring all of your communications, all of your work, get visibility across it all, um, understand how to get scalable um, processes and infrastructure, um, client communication, this is where, you know, go check us out at uh, carbonhq.com. Over to Ryan. Thanks, Ian. I'm Ryan from Practice Ignition. Uh, so this is there. Practice Ignition is proposal to paid in one place. Uh, so we make it really easy for you to manage your client engagements. It's the beginning of the year, so you're likely getting ready to send out those annual engagement letters. Uh, so with Practice Ignition, we can make that really a smooth and easy process and then also automate your payments so you can have no accounts receivable, hopefully going into 2021. Uh, we are a connected application as well, so you can connect it to your Relay Bank account. Um, also, a direct integration into Carbon, so you can manage your workflow. Uh, if you're using QuickBooks, you connect to uh, your QBO account as well. Um, but let's go ahead and, and get into the playbook. You want to go to the next slide, Yusuf? Cool. So the acknowledgments here, as you can see, my face is not on this slide, Ian's face is not on this slide, and Yusuf's face is not on this slide. Uh, we couldn't come up with this playbook unless it was with the great help of these folks. So I'm going to read everyone's name quickly just so they get a shout out. So Amanda Aguilar, Chris Maxey, Dan Luthi, Hector Garcia, Jason Stats, Jose Zavala, Kristen Cates, Megan Blair Valero, Nio Carter Gray, Patty Scharf, Scott Scharf, and Tate Henshaw. So I think I was able to get those all on. Maybe some of them are on here. So thank you to you guys. Uh, so a lot of what you'll see in this playbook and what we'll be talking about today um, is really from their experience through 2020 and what they're looking forward to into 2021. Uh, we will add in some commentary of what we've seen ourselves, but ultimately the playbook uh, was really coming from uh, what they saw in their firms. All right. So let's let's kind of just do a quick uh, overview uh, of, well, actually not a quick overview. I think this whole thing is an overview. Uh, of the PDF that was shared, the link was shared in the chat. So if you do want to download it, that would be the number way to do the number one way to do this. So uh, we've kind of broken this out into like people, process, technology, and so we'll go through uh, kind of each section uh, one by one. Um, I think like as we did these interviews, it became really clear uh, 
I think how much firms uh, not only like reevaluated, but but came to like truly appreciate the resiliency of their team members. Um, and I think everyone kind of felt before that the team was like their number one asset, but I think they felt it like doubly now, um, which is I think like really interesting. So there are a couple of key learnings that came out of this. Um, so, you know, I think hiring, you know, regardless of kind of the employment situation uh, globally today, I think for accounting firms uh, and bookkeeping firms, hiring people like good people is really hard. Um, and one of the solutions that came uh, up continuously uh, was to actually lean on kind of the unique strengths that your firm has. Um, so as an example, like Hector Garcia, um, he, he's exceptional at training people. Uh, so for him, it's less about, hey, what are the skills you have today and how can you kind of deliver value on day one, as opposed to finding someone with the smarts, hustle uh, and kind of uh, ability to learn um, that he can then train up uh, to be a proficient uh, member of the team. Um, and so we saw that theme come through where it's like, what are the unique strengths that your firm has that can give you a leg up over the competition or maybe enable you to hire in a unique way uh, that can get you the talent you need um, in a market that is like so tight uh, from a recruiting perspective. Um, number two is really like continuing to invest uh, on in, in the team, basically. Uh, the theme that, that came out, as I mentioned, was basically uh, people didn't really kind of realize how great their team was until kind of this scenario where there was a lot of pressure uh, on them. Um, and what this made it clear to them is like, not only number one, do we have a better team than we thought we had? I think that's a lesson for all of us, right? To, to appreciate the people that we have. Um, but also uh, it's such an opportunity to take that strength that they clearly saw through this kind of turbulent time um, and double down on it. Uh, and so what we're seeing across the board is finding, is people establishing a plan to actually upskill, not only themselves as leaders and owners, but also staff members. Um, and I, I think that like, just as a, a leader, I think that's one of the best things you can possibly do for your business, uh, let alone the people that you're working with. Um, and then three, uh, I think we're kind of trying to figure this out as well, uh, is like, how do you stay connected in a, in a fully remote world? I think there are a lot of firms that perhaps were already remote, uh, so it was relatively uh, easy for them. Uh, but I think everyone's kind of experimenting with new ways to engage uh, their team and raise morale and, and energy levels. I know we tried like a, a virtual escape room uh, for our holiday party uh, this year, which was fun and weird uh, at, the, at the same time. Um, so really, really good. Uh, so when we're kind of going through the, the process learnings, um, there were a couple of key things that came through. So one was actually doubling down on standardization and documentation of processes. I think this is like coming back to this idea of uh, this year, there was a lot of change. And in a world where things are changing so rapidly, uh, one of the ways you can drive efficiency and uh, drive team cohesion is to actually double down on standardization and documentation of processes. And so that was something that continually came up uh, for firm owners. They wanted to find ways to document their process to ensure that team members were following the same approach, using the same systems, and really saw value uh, in, in standardizing. I think we've seen kind of seen this shift happening over these last like five to seven years, but I think it accelerated uh, kind of in this last uh, 12 months. Um, two was like invest in scalable uh, client communication. Um, we saw a number of firms actually like leaning into uh, being able to offer like real-time advice uh, for their clients. Sometimes this manifested in the form of like a Slack channel um, where they could uh, kind of speak to their clients literally in a real-time manner. Um, and they really kind of lent, well, leaned into uh, helping their clients get through like a tough period. Um, and I think that has kind of manifested into like kind of more opportunities for advisory uh, for these firms uh, in the future. Uh, and then the third thing on the process side is like balancing workloads. I think, you know, in a world where most of us are basically working from home, um, it's really hard to create boundaries between kind of work and, and home life. Um, and so I'm sure there are many people on this call that have been doing remote for years and are perhaps used to it. You know, you have a home office, it's the dedicated space and you kind of have rules around it. But for a lot of people, 
um, it's not only just uh, kind of the work from home setup, it's the notion that they can't kind of go out and see people or interact with the world as, as they used to. And so maybe some of their escapes might not be as available. Um, and so what we're seeing is people trying to kind of give people mental health days uh, and, you know, allow the team member, team members to kind of uh, define their own boundaries uh, to, to kind of succeed and, and manage uh, any risk of, of burnout um, in, their, in their businesses. Uh, and then moving across to technology, I mean, this year, like, uh, people have talked about cloud adoption for, for quite some time. Uh, we've seen it accelerate uh, in 2020. Um, it, some believe that that acceleration will continue on late into 2021. I think that's probably fair. I think we've all tried new forms of technology that have existed previously, uh, like perhaps click and collect at Best Buy. Um, I was talking to my dad about that. He's like, it's awesome. I'm like, man, that's been there for, for years. Um, and uh, what we're seeing is that these firms are like one, just trying to actually get uh, their clients up to speed, um, make sure there aren't any kind of laggards uh, amongst their client base, because there is a risk of kind of, you know, clients falling behind from a technology perspective. Um, and they're using this as an opportunity to kind of tap into new forms of automation um, and really streamline their integrations between tools. Uh, one, of, uh, one of the folks that contributed to this playbook, uh, Jason Stats, I think is perhaps the biggest nerd uh, about Zapier uh, and kind of how to integrate systems together and kind of no code accounting. Um, there might be a couple others that might, uh, you know, vie for that spot, but I think he's, he's definitely a leader in that space. Two, um, we heard a lot about like investing in lead management. Uh, oftentimes, um, you know, firms have robust processes from kind of the proposal onwards, i.e. using practice ignition, uh, which is a wonderful uh, kind of place to start uh, with the proposals and uh, engagement letters. And the next area we're, we're kind of hearing for improvement is really lead management. Once a, a client comes in, um, what, what is the process from there? Uh, and then three, uh, striking a balance between like data security and convenience. You know, we're seeing huge adoptions on like, you know, we call it like cloud banking, like Relay, um, where firms are saying, hey, I'm no longer comfortable with the liability of holding my client's bank logins. Um, and I want to simplify client collaboration. I want to increase real-time financial visibility. And so they're leveraging banking uh, or, well, Relay uh, to help uh, solve for that. Yeah, the um, one of the things that is um, when you talk about technology, when, when this whole thing started, you know, thinking back to March, um, you know, we we had a discussion on, on the power hour that, you know, uh, to, you know, yes, or tomorrow's conversation is today um, because of, you know, people were just unprepared uh, for for this, you know, I'll, I'll get my I'll, I'll do e-commerce, you know, eventually, <laughs> you know, and now it's they have to, you know, they can't touch their clients if they're, you know, a massage therapist or, you know, things like that. Um, how do I, how do I, how do I pivot on a dime or that I should have done yesterday? Uh, technology is a, plays a huge, huge, huge part of that. My, my add to that is the technology will uh, amplify whatever the base is, the foundation. And so I think, you know, with the slide, even the ordering is important. The processes that you build your firm on, um, absence of technology will be the thing that allows for you to flex and scale to get the efficiency and the confidence. And so we see this time and time again, and, and you see it in the commentary that's here. If you had one place to focus, on, at least on the tips on this slide, as those processes are going to be the thing that allows for you, Dan, to be able to change and be able to pivot quickly. Um, and there'll be the recipe by that, which, which we find success will be able to, to bolster that. The technology will sit on top of that and further amplify that. But right. if you put technology on a, on a faulty foundation, it's only going to make it worse. Right. It's like alcohol. Yeah. You know, it's only going to, exp <laughs> it's only going to enhance your personality, whatever you're starting with. Uh, and if you're a jerk, uh, that's just going <laughs> to, that's just going to example, exemplify that. <laughs> well, and I think too, um, you know, one characteristic of firms that have really succeeded throughout the past year, you know, we're coming up on a year, um, has been the technology. Those firms that were, you know, 
with Intuit, you know, Intuit has been pushing us for the past five to 10 years. I mean, I remember doing freedom in the cloud and stuff, and a lot of us were kicking and screaming, but those of us who were working in the cloud and using apps and implementing carbon and, and you know, relay and things like this, those firms were the ones that were best positioned to not only help their clients thrive and succeed, but for the firm to thrive and succeed. So, I mean, technology is just a huge part. And I think it really positioned a lot of us accounting professionals to be ready to be there, to be that resource for the clients um, as they pivot their businesses to online and the cloud and, you know, the e-commerce and things like that. One, one call out on here, which you brought up, uh, Yosef, on the previous slide, but it's, it's, it's exemplified on number three, which is to be very mindful of the wear and tear that 2020 has really had. Um, for a lot of folks, it was all on. I mean, tax season, season never ended. Um, it just continued all the way through. But then you add in advisory, cash flow, forecasting services, everything else, and there hasn't really been a moment to breathe. Um, and you got to be careful because that's going to, you know, as you saw in the previous one, the hiring and, and, and the talent is, is the big piece of the equation. It's very hard to get. And so you need to understand how to balance and you need to be able to create space because unfortunately um, your home is your office. Um, every day is the same in some regards and it's not gonna let up for the short term and hopefully it will in the medium term. So something to be very mindful of and that's what came up yeah. on the report as well. Yeah, I was talking to a guy just yesterday and he's like, I'm either skiing or working. You know, <laughs> there, Fortunately he wasn't working while he was skiing, but that would, <laughs> That would cause a cause a challenge, but yeah, I mean, that, I mean that that, that is... sounds pretty good. I <laughs> like I'm not gonna lie, like that sounds pretty good. Yeah, as long what else are you gonna as, do as on the chill? Has enough yeah. <laughs> in to balance out the work. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you you can't turn it off. You know when you're when you're like this, where it's you're working in the same place that you're that you're living as well. That does present additional challenges is being able to get away from it. And I think that's one of the things that a lot of us as accounting professionals struggle with is setting those boundaries and setting guidelines, especially like you said, Dan, when you're working and everything's from home now, you know, being able to say, okay, work ends at this particular time. Otherwise people find themselves kind of always working and they don't get the needed break that they need to be with their family or mentally a break or exercise or you know whatever it is so it that is more of a struggle these days i think yeah i think that's the interesting thing if you look at the process they're all interlinked in terms yeah. of how they came up which was very fascinating and then when you look on the on the technology side it's all expansionary so it's running off of a, an efficient core and then it's the technologies that branch further out so it's, it's just very interesting how it all came together Fantastic. So let's uh, let's press on. All right. Oh, we got more. <laughs> so yeah, jumping in into this one, uh, we we're looking at you know I think during 2020, your clients' needs definitely changed um, from managing the the shift to uh, virtual, you know, navigating PPP loans um, and kind of all the uncertainty. But but what we kind of were looking at here is looking into 2021. Um, what are those client needs going to look like? Um, so running through them first, I think being able to identify which your clients might have actually fallen behind with the technology um, in 2020. So maybe they actually didn't uh, transition fully to virtual. Um, and now that a lot of their competitors perhaps have made that transition, uh, they might be behind. Uh, so I guess in terms of an example, perhaps a you know, looking at a fitness studio that transitioned to virtual classes, I know some studios might have just shut down, but um, you know, going into this new year, they could be in a, you know, a much worse financial position and, you know, really their competitors have actually um, gained a, a leg up on them. Uh, so kind of identifying which of your clients might be at risk um, and, and you might need a bit more assistance going into 2021. Um, I think also reminding your clients that, uh, you know, it's not going to be an immediate um, switch back to normal. So it's not going to be oh, on X date, uh, everything will back to normal, kind of get them ready. Um, that it's going to be uh, a marathon, not a sprint. I'm sure I said that correctly. Sometimes I say sprint, not a marathon. <laughs> um, but uh, th that they should be, be uh, expecting kind of gradual change throughout the year. Um, I think looking at the change in uh, consumer behavior, I think looking at 2020, what we saw is a huge move to e-commerce, um, things like Shopify exploding uh, in, in 2020 and, and firms that weren't 
um, selling their services online or products, uh, they were now. Um, so, so maybe looking at you know, how consumers' needs are going to change in 2021, and perhaps there could be a flip. So um, if, if things start to open up more, there could be you know, folks craving more in-person experiences. So just kind of being ready to, to be able to adapt what, at what given time, uh, how those consumer needs and preferences are going to change. And then I think ultimately, you know, figuring out if you're looking for new clients, what are those channels that your prospects are converging on? So perhaps you used to leverage a lot of the, you know, in-person events in your community to find find leads, that's probably not happening. So what we've seen a lot of firms is kind of really owning social networks channels. So if you're, you know, the accountant for brewers, you're, you're actually in all those Facebook groups and interacting with the, the brewers that way um, and not actually at the conventions. Um, did you guys have any other po points on, on uh, what you guys are thinking in terms of this? Um, just a, a random kind of a, a side on the shifting consumer behavior, right? I think e-commerce is touching everything uh, in kind of the traditional uh, SMB space. And I can't remember who said this because it was such a great point. So I apologize uh, for, not, for not giving due credit. But like they mentioned that the skills required to do accounting for restaurants are actually very similar and transferable to e-commerce because you have inventory, you have a high volume of transactions. And so if you are kind of working with restaurant owners and trying to figure out, or have some experience working with restaurant owners and trying to figure out e-commerce, you might actually not be as far uh, away as, as you might assume. Yeah, it's not, not that big of a, a stretch because you're dealing with sales tax and you know everything else that is a, a, a bear that a lot of people shy away from. I was like, oh, it's not that, it's not that hard. It's just where. Yeah. All right. So let's, let's uh, mosey on. Um, so uh, I, as I mentioned, like the silver lining uh, of kind of 2020 was kind of how much people came into focus and to Ian's point around like kind of the order of this, right? People really are number one, they're the number one asset and, and it comes before everything else. That's really what you've got to kind of get right. Um, so uh, let's actually launch our first, well, our second poll question. Um, got it. You got yeah. it. So how confident are you in your firm's current training program? Is it not very confident? Yikes. <laughs> Think it's okay, somewhat. Uh, or we are training uh, guru, gurus, excuse me. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at my cluttered desk here. Uh, and I know exactly where everything is. There's three mice uh, on <laughs> on here, and I know which one is is attached to which uh, which computer. But if somebody just uh, came in here and either reorganized my desk, or um, or, or said, well, well, I, "I need to move this mouse," they would be lost. Uh, so yeah, I'm in the yikes uh, category <laughs> here as far as uh, if I needed to bring somebody new on. I, I'm just impressed that you have three mice. That sounds like quite the setup. Um, well, if I uh, yeah, if I take my yeah, oh my God. yeah, yeah, maybe we don't want to do that. Yeah, I, I feel intimidated. Don't just don't look about. behind the curtain. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Um, look, at, look at the tree instead. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. The pretty tree. I'm gonna give it just a, a few more seconds, and then we're we're gonna end the poll. Uh, so do vote. Um, three. Two, one, awesome. And I'm just gonna share results. Yep. Uh, so what do, what do we have here? Yeah, 67%, uh, I think it's okay, somewhat confident. So yeah, they don't wanna give themselves too much credit or, <laughs> or not enough. <laughs> nice, cool. All right. All right. Pressing on, so you're next. There we go, yeah. There we go. So, you know, we, we talked about kind of doubling down uh, on your team. Um, and so, you know, we talk a lot, like at least internally at Relay about like kind of personal development plans. Um, and the only way you can really scale as a business is by helping your team members kind of grow. Um, and that can be, you know, challenging and, and painful at times, but um, like half the battle is basically just sitting down and being like, okay, how are you going to get better at, like as a leader? And like, how are you going to help your team uh, become better? Um, and I think if you're able to like nail the team that you have, uh, like really kind of make, make them really strong, um, 
it, it actually makes it easier to start recruiting and and retaining good employees because good employees want to be around you know other good employees. Uh, and it's clear, you know, as, as Accounting Today pointed out, that it's actually the biggest concern that firms have. Um, so it's not a surprise that like, you know, Kirsten Keats said that hiring's the main stress for her as a business owner. And uh, she worries about burnout and worries about doing everything herself uh, and really wants to find that path uh, to scaling um, the, the business. Um, and, uh, Amanda actually does have a, a training firm. Uh, uh, and so that's something that she started to, to specialize in because she saw how valuable it was uh, for her staff. Um, and so figuring out consistent methods uh, and technology for training um, is really critical. And kind of calling back to that uh, point around process, around documentation. Um, uh, this is something that like can create a lot of value for new employees that are getting started. Uh, especially if you're like a smaller team, you know, you're, you're less than 10 people, getting new people onboarded and trained can, can feel like a lot of kind of handholding and having documentation and process in place um, and the tools in place to be able to do this consistently uh, is, can be really helpful um, as you onboard uh, new folks. My addition onto this is, I mean, Michelle, you'll remember back when we were on the road together, maybe 10, 15 years ago, um, talent has been the number one issue for over a decade. And I still think it will continue for the next decade. And only the, the, the industry, the profession only grows 0.4% in headcount. But as you can see in the last year, the needs of the, the, the clients out there has increased way beyond the, 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 the bodies that we have available. And so there's only a few you know, different tools available. You've got to become more efficient. So you'll see that process interlays with this. And you've got to be able to do more with what you have, which goes to the point of upskilling and training. And so um, it's just a matter of being more thoughtful, prioritize better, and upskilling the team. Yeah, and Ian, I agree with you. Talent is always, always a challenge. And I think one of the things that a lot of us we tend to say, I want to find somebody who already knows accounting and bookkeeping and that they have to know QuickBooks. And I think a lot of times we can put too much emphasis on that because if you find the right person, and somebody mentioned this earlier, with the right personality, the right drive, the right ambition, the right willingness to learn and serve your clients, to me, those intangible qualities are the most important piece of the talent because I can teach you and train you and, and I, we can learn QuickBooks, you know, Intuit helps with training for QuickBooks and we can help with our firm's procedures and processes and things like that. So I think getting the right person is really critical. And sometimes they may not have a bookkeeping background, you know, with all these moms and dads now working from home with their kids because they're not in school, you know, maybe they were doing something different, but if they have the right skill set and willingness to learn, they may be a great employee or a team member for you. So, you know, sometimes we need to look at those intangible factors just as much as, you know, do they know QuickBooks or accounting? I can't tell how many people I've hired over the years that had great, uh, their, their resume was fantastic looking, but turned out to be a complete lemon mm -hmm. where someone who I never thought could do the job was my star performer. And it, you, you, you search for and you find for passion and attitude and you can train for skills. Right. So, and to your point, I think it comes back to flexing. Um, you have to be a little bit more flexible in what you're looking for. So those returning back to work, uh, moms and dads that want to come back, you know, part-time is something that, that's, that's important to them, but they'll give you more horsepower. They'll give you more capability. You'll get more seniority and they're going to be, they're going to be a lot more happy and, and happy breeds good things. And so again, that you got to be creative. Well, and another thing to keep in mind is just because you need to build your team doesn't mean you have to take on full-time employees with benefits and everything, especially in, in the world that we live in. You may pull in to people to work with you as subcontractors for a particular industry or a particular thing or, you know, like I never did taxes because I hated it. So I would exchange referrals with other people who do taxes. I didn't want to hire somebody to do the taxes because I didn't like that. And I still have to supervise and be knowledgeable. And, you know, so I think focusing on what do you need? What, what, what team members do you need? And they don't have to be full-time employees necessarily. You can build a team in other ways. 
to that uh, to that point, we have a question in here. Any suggestions on hiring new employees? Like, where do you find these people? Um, was that brought up in any of the the discussions uh, with 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 these folks? I don't think so. I think it wasn't it's, <laughs> it's a great question. <laughs> it wasn't exclusively out there. Um, yeah. We find that you know, first of all, it's it's, it's what type of environment are you going to provide as an employer and who's going to match with that? And so we've seen full teams of over 20 people, all like we, like Michelle mentioned, stay at home moms and dads that were working part-time 20 hours a week. Turns out when you find one and they have a good experience, they tell somebody else to tell somebody else. We've seen people go and look at Upwork and try to see if somebody on Upwork that's been advertising that's trying to bolster some additional work um, to reach out to them to see whether or not they seemed like a good fit because they were motivated and they, they've expressed their, their desire to do something different. Um, LinkedIn's always been a, a, a way to go. Um, again, there's many tactics on this. I've seen people build entire firms, firms off Craigslist, but Craigslist is a dangerous wow. place. You get 100 <laughs> yeah. resumes, only one of them would be good. So you got to make someone work hard to be able to prove that they're actually worth you even taking time and you need to then do a very careful strategy around that. So there are many different ways, but it's got to fit with how your firm operates. Well, and I think too, that just like we do with referrals, you know, letting everybody, you know, everybody that you talk to, letting them know what type of person you're looking for, the type of work and all this, and, you know, talk to your friends, talk to your kids, other parents, you know, talk to your banker, your attorney, your real estate agent, people from church, people from scouts, whatever groups and organizations, letting people know, hey, I'm looking for someone and word of mouth, a lot of times you will get good people and you'll wind up getting a good fit. And don't forget the local schools, you know, high school colleges, community colleges, those students, a lot of times are looking for experience, especially if you can get them before they've developed bad habits <laughs> and you can train them, you know? Um, so there's a lot of opportunities out there, especially now with so many people's lives disrupted from, you know, everything that's been going on. There's a lot of good people looking for, for work. Awesome. Um, so let's, let's get uh, like more tactical. I love a good checklist. Uh, so let's kind of, let's go through it. Uh, number one, um, take a temperature check of your team's current skill set. Kind of like take a, you know, really take that time to like think about, are they where you want them to be today? Like what's great about them? What could be better? Um, and then use that as an opportunity to start to improve that baseline. Uh, you know, if there is, for example, like blind spots that, uh, you know, one person, like a, a process that only one person actually understands or software solutions that are not everyone is like kind of equally trained on. Um, so you have kind of these knowledge silos, uh, that can be a great place to start. Um, but generally like you want to think about what are the skills your firm actually wants to develop over these next 12 months? Um, and how does that align with the skills that your firm has today? Uh, and then figure out like how you solve for that gap, basically. Uh, this could be doing lunch and learns. This could be hiring a training firm. There could be training tools that you could leverage. Um, and ideally, this is a mix of kind of real time uh, and asynchronous uh, training. This is, and this is just one section of, of the playbook. How many sections are, are this uh, uh, total in, in, the, in the entire playbook? Yeah, so there, there's four four sections. There's people, process, technology, clients. Gotcha. Yeah, I I am I'm cognizant of the time as well, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, if we didn't mention it, the link is in the chat. Uh, so please do go and download it because um, that's that is going to be your best bet to to really yeah. get, through, get through this content. Um, so. Uh, Last, last thing, and then I'm going to pass it on. Um, just experiment with new ways to stay connected. Uh, try virtual events. I, actually, Megan Blair Valero uh, was the one that turned us on to like virtual escape rooms because she tried one with her team. We're like, that sounds fun and nerdy, so we're going to try it out. Um, but uh, I think there are, you know, do a, a weekly happy hour, or whatever it is, whatever works for kind of your firm. Um, try it, see what works, get feedback, uh, and. Uh, improve it. Oh, uh, and then, oh, sorry, I'm actually handing this over to Ryan. 
you know, you, you, uh, you can just keep going if you want. <laughs> okay, sure. So, so like as an example, one thing we tried uh, in advance of QuickBooks Connect was our uh, trivia night. Uh, we had a 90 people live playing trivia uh, before QuickBooks Connect. It was super fun. Uh, I think in a year where I think we're all weirdly missing trade shows. Um, you know, it was, it was such a great chance to connect with the community. Uh, it was, as you can see, people had a really great time. There were prizes, there was laughs, there was a mutiny at one point. Um, if you would like to sign up for a future <laughs> trivia night, uh, link is in the chat. Um, and I'll, now I'll hand it off to Ryan. Uh, so yeah, I guess a couple more points on that. I think it's, yeah, how do you spice things up? It's, if it's that, you know, daily stand-up meeting and everyone's on Zoom, how do you add something different to it? I know with us, we've started using breakout rooms and Zooms to have smaller groups and then come back. Uh, and then, yeah, also the, the trivia night was, was, a, was a big success. And then actually our team, we, um, if you look up goat to meeting, we actually had, um, it, you can go to a farm and uh, they, they walk you around with a camera and show you all the goats. So uh, it's like you're at a petting zoo, but it's over Zoom. So again, how can you spice things up and, and make it a bit different? Um, I think this actually is over to, to Ian now in the process. Yeah, let's do, I think we've got another polling question that's got to go. So let's get that going. And then um, as the polling question goes out, I'll quickly go through a couple of the things on the process side. So how confident are you in your firm's documentation and standardization of processes? We'll see kind of, my guess is it will be a little bit similar to the uh, previous ones that we've had. Uh, a little bit of a mixture of, of who's confident and who's not. As we get that going, let's go, um, let's go over to the, the, the content so we can get through all the four sections. We talked about this already a bit around the standardization. I think that's the foundation. Uh, we talked about upscaling and making sure that your, the talent you have in the organization is gonna be able to handle what's coming at you, especially in the case where you might have a key person that might be out. A lot of folks um, unfortunately did get sick. Um, there was family emergencies, all sorts of things in 2020. And so there's key person risk to be, that, that's, that's something to be cognizant of. But in order to be able to manage that and to be able to, to continue business operations and do it effectively, it's that it goes all down to that foundation. What's great is if you focus on building those processes you use to serve and you make them so that your firm can be scalable, that documentation will be the same thing you use to upskill and train others and allow for that systemization that you need so that you can focus the, the, the mind power and the effort on further working closely with the client that Ryan's gonna talk about than it is trying to figure out how the sausage is made internally. And so wherever you're having something that you've done it before or you're gonna do it again, you should take the moment to try to start to scribble down what you're doing and be able to make it so that it's something that you can fall in someone else's shoes or they can. So I think we can, we can move on that one. It's relatively straightforward and here, the key thing to note on that is we put up the checklist, you can put the checklist, is when you have a strong foundation and you have those processes in place, automation then becomes something that you can explore and you start to work against because you're going to take the lowest value, highest repetitive, simplest parts of those processes and that foundation, and you're going to leverage the automation that might exist in places like Relay or Practice Ignition or Carbon or other tools, or use something like Zapier uh, in order for you to be able to speed those things up. And that's what, you know, when we go through the playbook and you take a look at the details in here, a lot of those firms were finding those opportunities and that was critical for their success in 2020. And looking into 2021, they're further gonna bolster that. So if you're in that sort of journey already, great for you, but continue it. It's a never ending journey. For those of you who haven't started, it's again, start with the processes and then you can build to the technology and the automation on the backs of that. And so um, we've got the, uh, the poll results out. Uh, we've got 60% uh, at Wobbly, 20% uh, solid, great for you guys. And then <laughs> what documentation is also almost at 20. So again, similar results as before. Um, let's go to the next slide. And then again, you guys jump in as we go through here. This is something, Ryan, I'd love to have you jump in as well, which is really on scalable client communication. So if you've got your processes and foundation in place and you're looking to automate, we're not looking to automate the client communication as a whole, but we're trying to look for vehicles. And this is what Jose and others have you know, mentioned in the playbook, which is you need to be able to do things at scale. And so being able to free up time to have those dialogues and then to be able to facilitate those to make them quicker and easier to maintain and do them in a higher frequency 
you're looking for those types of opportunities. Could be as simple as a calendaring app to help people book time. It could be as simple as um, a facilitation on the communication itself. It could be something as simple as having a system chased down to get a signed proposal. Again, Ryan, I mean, you, you deal with this every day. Some thoughts on that? Yeah, I think a, a few of those things that, that we saw come out and I know Jose touched on it is, you know, to avoid this, the, the state of, you know, every time there's a new update in PPP or some new, new updates, how do you do mass communications with your clients? Um, Jose actually realized that Instagram was a really good channel with a lot of his clients. So he was just posting short videos or stories on Instagram to get it out. Um, and I think ultimately in um, 2020, it was kind of the year of the, the newsletter kind of being reinvigorated. Uh, I think uh, a lot of accounting firms started using something like a MailChimp for the first time because they could easily in mass engage with all of their clients and give them those updates so they weren't having to answer the phone uh, and answer that same question multiple times. And I think a lot of firms also who maybe perhaps weren't doing any kind of mass mailing before, they've, they've actually realized it's a really efficient way on either a weekly or a monthly basis to, to get really important updates across to your clients and their clients started you know, craving more of it as well. Yeah, so you're gonna see on the next slide, some of those examples that, that Ryan brought up, which is blogging, newsletters, podcasts, videos. Again, there's, there's multiple different ways, but you need to be able to get in front of folks. And let's put up that last checklist and then we'll move on to the technology section. You guys take a quick look at that. Anything to add to that, Yusuf? I think this is great. All right. Now, again, all the checklists are in the, in the, um, in the guide, so you guys can take a look at that. Let's move on to technology quickly, and then we're going to move on to our last section, which is clients. So technology, we're just going to go over really quick um, overall. So uh, let's go to the next poll. Compared to 2020. How much of a focus is cybersecurity for your firm? On the backs of one of the largest hacks that's happened in history to the US federal government. Um, so obviously it is top of mind um, for many folks going on right now. I, do, um, I, just, I just really appreciate the poll answers on this one. Uh, less of a focus in 2021, I am Fort Knox. Um, that is hilarious. Uh, <laughs> or more of a focus, my passwords are on sticky notes. <laughs> if you don't have a password manager system go get one please um <laughs> that's one piece of advice right out of the gate um all right so let's go into here on the technology side and i talked about this before foundation if you have strong processes you can build the automation there is quite a bit of automation inherently in the tools that you use today and if there's not that's where something like zapier comes in um, and if you want to take it to another level, that's where you go get an open API and you leverage that to be able to move the data that you want. But start simple, start with the tools you use, um, look at what's straight out of the box, and then further you know, bolster that with Zapier. And that's what a lot of folks were doing. A lot of folks use um, our solutions together, and they use Zapier to help um, beyond the direct connection parts of it, they use Zapier to further bolster what's going on. Um, and so definitely check that out. On the next slide, let's go to looking at, whoop, you're moving the mouse around, but we're not moving the slide. So uh, when we talk about security and convenience, that's really the balancing act that you have to have. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, as we see here in the results, same level of focus, you definitely, it's leaning more, um, more focus going into 2021. But the issue here is, for clients, it's got to be as easy as possible. And that's what, if you look at the commentary and, the, and, and what was talked about, which was how do we keep that level of ease but ensure everything is secure? And there's different ways to do that. Um, again, go get a password manager. <laughs> easy, easy answer, number one, right? Number two is think about the ways that you're communicating that sensitive information and what tool is. We had a question that came up beforehand around signatures and information, right? Well, if you're a tax firm, your tax product is going to be the one that's going to hold that sensitive information. So try to look at the tools that are bolstered off of it that allows for you to secure that information, capture it, and then be able to keep it secure. Um, and again, you know, there's a lot of modern technologies that you might want to look at um, replacement of current systems that you might have. And so that balancing act is going to be really critical. I'd love to get your opinion on this, Michelle, um, because it is such a critical <laughs> thing coming into this particular year. Well, Ian, you must have read my mind because I was just think, thinking that, you know, we put so much focus on the cybersecurity and the technology and all this. And the number one problem is usually human error. 
you know, we, we know not to click, link, click links when it says, oh, you know, your payment for QuickBooks has been denied. Click here to put your payment in and, or whatever. We need to teach our clients and reiterate because they, they forget. They get complacent. Don't click those links, you know, because that's where a lot of times people are compromised is they click a link um, from an incoming email that they shouldn't have or whatever. And so a lot of times it is human error that causes the cybersecurity issue. Um, so I think reemphasizing to those employees um, and to the clients, you know, to, to be vigilant. You know, yeah. We would get, um, we would get calls coming into Intuit, you know, is this, was this sent from, from Intuit? And, and I actually read an article about, about those phishing emails where, you know, a lot of people would look at it and it's like, this is spelled horribly. Uh, and that is actually part of the whole mindset of, of that. It, they, they spell it wrong on purpose because the kind of person that wouldn't see uh, something that is misspelled, easily misspelled, uh, is, is the type of person that would click on a link and, and be that type of person that would, that would fall for a phishing scam like that. Uh, well, and so I, I, that, I never even realized that they did it on purpose, you know? <laughs> well, Dan, Dan, the thing is, is they're counting on people being busy. Uh, you know, our clients are busy. We're busy. Our team members are busy. People are busy. They see it, they click it, they go, they don't think, you know, they act too quickly. And so you're right. People should notice that, but I think just, teaching our clients and our team members and everybody don't click any link in any email at any time always go directly and type it in and go do it yourself um because it happens way too often and, and people get click happy and then you're like oh my <laughs> god did i just click that i want to take it back and it's too late <laughs> so yeah, for those of you who came up if you're looking for a password manager dash line one password um last pass those are the ones to consider um different reasons for choosing them um i'm going to put up a link uh you know i would say there are some great education courses that both you should take internally and have your clients take to, to be able to spot those types of activities it seems very pedantic but it's actually really important and you know i'll put up the one that we did uh, we use internally for our SOC two um and it's it's humorous um it's actually not that it's not it's not um at all feeling like a drudgery and so again the education is really one of the key ways to doing that and it's really important for both your clients and for you so um let's keep going over to pass it over to ryan to take us through that last section Cool. We'll go through this this quickly um, with the clients. You know, we touched on some of this before, but we just kind of reiterate uh, some of the comments. Uh, if you want to go to the next slide, Yusuf. Uh, so, you know, we touched on it before. Um, Amanda just just called it out of, you know, looking at those clients that have fallen behind with the technology. So, you know, maybe they've they are the laggards that they, they didn't want to even in 2020 uh, adapt to new technology, but they are, you know, behind because of that. Um, and then the, the next one there is, is kind of looking at in terms of the cash flow management. Uh, so I think Tate's looking at, you know, trying to plan with his clients accordingly of when things are going to reopen um, and make sure they're in a good cash position um, to, you know, for whatever upside or downside scenario comes, comes about in 2021, uh, that they're going to be ready to go uh, and make it through. Yeah, and I think ultimately uh, the we we had a lot to run through here, uh, so we just want to make sure you download that playbook uh, so you can kind of read it for yourself. So Gets all those little tidbits and quotes in there that we didn't even get to touch on. Um, Michelle, any thoughts on that last bit of of, of dealing with the client's needs in in twenty twenty one? I think just like you said, there is identifying some of those that still need a helping hand and still need to move forward. It's it's survival. You know, I know you may have some clients that are like, oh, I don't want to do this or I don't want to do that. At, at this point in time, they have no choice. They have to adapt. They have to pivot. They have to embrace technology if they want to continue to survive. And some of them may choose not to. You know, they may decide I'm done. And, you know, we can help them with that as well. Um, but, you know, we do need to help these clients that are being overwhelmed by this. Um, it's a great opportunity for us. Our final, final poll question. The thing that I really like about you know, the team that you've assemble, uh, assembled. You're, you're like the Avengers of, of apps. You work well together. You know, um, Yusuf. I, I guess you're the Hulk. 
<laughs> I, I hope that's, green. that's that's because I'm green, not because I've been working out a lot. Because I, <laughs> I promise you, it's not it's not muscle. But, um, but you all play well together in 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 the, the the tech space and feeding into you know the ecosystem that is you know QuickBooks Online. Um, so that's 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 fantastic. So I mean, if you uh, our last uh, poll question is if you want to hear from uh, from any one of these or all of them, uh, just uh, you know, answer answer that there, and we'll we'll get you to get you to the right place. Yes, I'd like to thank all of you for not only collaborating to create the playbook and sharing it with all of us, but for coming here and sharing with us today as well. Um, you guys provide a very valuable service, and it, like. Uh, Dan was mentioning, you guys provide a great example of networking and collaborating with your peers. You know, it, it's everything's just better when everybody works together. And you guys are a great example of that, where it helps the common good of the accounting community um, through your all's efforts. So thank you all. Um, and I hope everybody gets the playbook and shares the playbook with other accounting professionals as well. Fantastic. So, I mean, and we timed it right on top of the hour look at that <laughs> <laughs> so guys again thank you for for joining us here you've you've kicked off 2021 in in the right way uh with with this you know creating this playbook and and making it available to the to the accounting community um you can uh, follow up um with uh with us on our on the qb power hour uh website we'll, we'll have this available for replay uh, as well as the podcast uh, so you can listen to us on the go, um, but next week uh, we'll or next next time we'll we'll be talking about some mistakes, uh, common mistakes, <laughs> because that's that's what will come up, uh, you know, when we are looking in the rearview mirror. What happened last year, and how do we how do we correct those? And we'll see you next time on. And Dan froze. <laughs> so thank you all for joining us again. 